Let's have a look at this wah handle. I think it turned out pretty good. Got a nice tight joint there. And what we'll do now is we'll just grind everything so it's all flush. Clean off the top here. We have a little bit of uh, epoxy on there, no big deal. I've got this marked as the back, so the spine is here. And I'm gonna transfer that right to here. That way, I'll have this reference in place until the very end when it's glued up. And then all I have to do is whoosh, sand this flat. So let's head into the grinding room and chop off some material. What we're gonna do, heat up this tang. We're just gonna shove it down in there. And hopefully, we got our nice snug fit up that we had before. Oh yeah, look at that. Man, usually it takes a lot more than this. That is so good. Not quite 100% there yet, but very, 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 very close. Oh my goodness, I'm so happy. So right off the bat, we've got a pretty nice fit up. There's no complaints about that. So the next step, we, whoa, 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 stepping on my Fordham. So the next thing we wanna do is we want to true this block up to the blade. And then I should also double check. Oh, we're actually gonna try straighten this tang out just a little bit, because that is part of the problem. This is gonna get a little bit risky. Can you guys see that? You see how it's a little bit crooked there. Just having a look-see. I just wanna see if I'm figuring, oh yeah, see when I do that, it is perfect. So that's exactly where I'm gonna put some heat, not a lot. Okay. Just go a little bit past, bring it back. Oh my goodness, that is so nerve wracking. I hate it! Okay, I think we were there. We got it nice and straight. So we need to true up the block to the blade. So to do that, I've got a granite surface plate. One, two, three blocks. Uh, some people call these three, two, one blocks. That is not the case. They are one, two, three blocks. Also, I've heard some podcasts recently talking about why they're called that. It's not rocket science. They are one inch by two inch by three inch. Inch, not centimeters, not, not the amount of holes. One inch, two inch, three inch. One, two, three blocks. What I'll do is I'll clamp that, and essentially I'm referencing off of this flat here, and that is directly in line with the knife, and I will set this on here. Maybe we can use this as a little weight. And then what I will do is I'll take my height gauge, actually let me move it to this side so you can see, and I will kind of set, try and find where the lowest point is, and then trace that out. Now this, this one here is at the back, so, Kind of just set it right like that, and then I'll trace this out. It's actually very, very close. I might have like a sixteenth of an inch at this end. And then we'll kind of go over to this side. Oh, this side is quite a bit out. When I grind this, I'm removing as little material as I have to, but I'm going to get this thing squared up to the blade. This is where a bigger surface plate would be super handy, but you make do. One handy trick for removing these, just get a piece of wood that's longer than the blade. Just like that, a couple little taps and she's out. So you kind of see the lines that we have there and on this end. And then obviously here, we're gonna take down off of this side and off of this side. All right, we've got this thing trued up. Just these sides, now what we need to do, stick this back in. We're actually gonna set this like this and like this, and that way we can true this up 
doing the same method and make sure that this is square and even thickness the whole way down. Once we're done this, we will have a block that is like very accurately trued up to the knife itself. Also, I had a really great comment, Razma60 says he does a different sequence when drilling out uh, the hole and he also does the dowel method. I never thought about this, but what he does is he takes his large bit. This is what they call a brad point bit. It's designed specifically for cutting into wood and just notice that super sharp point right there. So what he suggested is that you use this first and drill this through, put your stop gauge to where you want it to stop at because this thick bit is less likely to follow grain than a small bit. And that is absolutely brilliant. And then you've got a really nice sharp point bit that when you take this out, come in with your smaller bit, um, it'll be a perfect start and just go bleep that last little bit. So thank you so much, I really appreciate that. You know, with a burrow like this, the grain could be going any which way. And when you've got a small bit, it makes sense that it could kind of follow and wander around. The grain could influence how the drill goes in. So what a Jim Dandy of a tip. Again, it's very, very close. This bottom here is pretty much perfect. But this side, it's a little bit skewed. And I can actually see that just from looking at it. So we've got a little bit to take off right there. Not a lot though. Actually pretty darn good if you ask me. All right, so we have got this all squared up. Nice and even, nice and in line. You can see here just how much room we have from here to here. So I've got no issues bringing this handle right to the edge there and there. We'll do the exact same thing here. Not super extreme, but a little bit more so because we've got a half inch dowel in there. So probably the dowel's gonna be sitting somewhere right in here. So if we come to here, that should be plenty fine. And we'll taper that out. And now for the last bit of grinding. And what I like to do here is, this, this is a little trial and error. Sometimes, you know, you just pick up different things that you have. Uh, but for me, what I've found works is this little ruler. It's got a little cork back on it. That's not important. It's just the fact that it's this approximate height. And I'll make myself little lines like this. Pull a little switch right there for doing this end. Because this back end is larger than the front, we, uh, we want a little bit bigger markings. And so we're gonna be removing more, more material as we get closer to the butt of the kniff. And now if we were to say draw a line and connect these there to there, and then we'll go. And we also don't have to worry too much about the dowel because the dowel was contained within this area here. So there to there, I mean, we're grinding out here. The dowel might come to there if, if that's even close to the edge. And it's basically right here. And so what I'll do now is I'll take my little straight edge, I'll mark a line right here. And this really helps when I'm staring down at the grinder, I can see where I have to grind to. Plus we'll have all these lines connected. And it's a really nice grid to work to. We'll grind off this, 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 this. Right, the moment I have been waiting for. Really don't need a lot for this part. That's probably quite a bit extra. I'll carefully clop this in there. Down in there. Now this is the back. I'm 
super stoked to have that done. And I wanna thank you again for your great feedback. Uh, There's a lot of great suggestions in yesterday's video. And that's the fun part about this community and sharing stuff online is that I get to share what little I might know, but you guys respond with some brilliant ideas. Uh, that little trick of drilling out that block with a larger diameter, I mean, as soon as I read that, I was like, yeah, no kidding, that makes sense. So pass that along to you guys and we can all learn together, better our craft, better ourselves, and uh, make this world a better place if it's really that high and noble. Anyways, I've got some wooden signs I've gotta to get to. I wanna thank you so much for watching this. I hope you have a fantastic day and we'll see you in the next one. Cheers. Now I get to go do signs.